And we'll see what are the complications if we are not diagnosing GERD and not treating it properly. What are the complications that the patient can have? Next slide. So it can be an ulcer, hemorrhage, perforation, peptic structures, and bad esophagus. Next slide. So peptic structures in a patient with an untreated reflux esophagitis, or especially in older men who are smokers or use chronic NSID intake. In these patients, peptic structures can develop. Unlike malignant structures, these structures, uh, the patient with the peptic structures will have a good appetite and they will just alter their diet. They will change from solid to liquid, but they will have a good appetite and they will not lose much weight. These structures are smooth walled and uh, tapered and usually they are less than one centimeter in length, but occasionally they can go up to eight centimeters. All stricter patients should undergo endoscopy at least once in a lifetime to confirm the benign nature of the lesion. And if necessary, we have to take biopsy to exclude presence of a cancer or a parotis effects. So these are the uh, endoscopic uh, picture which showing a peptic structure where you can see the lower end of the esophagus is narrowed and around it there is severe esophagitis. The first one is a barium esophagogram, which also showing a peptic structure and also a hiatus hernia down. Next slide. So the treatment of the structures are mainly if the diameter is less than 13 mm, patient will have dysphagia. So we have to dilate the structures. Simple short structures can be dilated with the buginate and after buginate, patients should be maintained on a proton pump inhibitors or H2 receptor antagonists to prevent a development of a recurrent structure. Next slide. Barrett esophagus is a serious uh, histological consequence of GERD, but there is the uh, squamous epithelium of the distal esophagus is replaced by a columnar epithelium resembling intestine, which contains goblet cells. Next slide. Barrett esophagus is predominantly a disease of middle-aged white male and two to three times more common in men than in women. Barrett esophagus is suspected at endoscopy and it should be confirmed by histological examination. Next slide. The junction of the glossy white esophageal scamous mucosa and a reddish pink gastric columnar mucosa is normally found at the lower end of the tubular esophagus. Whereas in Barrett esophagus, the distal esophagus is aligned with the columnar epithelium extending upward for a varying distance. The proximal margin may be irregular with the tongues of upward extending columnar mucosa. Next slide. The classic histological finding in Barrett esophagus is distinctive specialized intestinal metaplasia with the acid mucin containing goblet, which will stain with the alcyon blue. Next. It can be a long segment and a short segment. Short segment means the length is less than three centimeter and the risk of uh, conversion into cancer is very low. Whereas a long segment, that means that it is more than three centimeter in length and there is 30 to 125 times increased risk of developing into a carcinoma. Next slide. So these are the images which showing the Pearly white esophageal mucosa and a beefy red the gastric mucosa. And in the second, in the, in the right side image, you can see that the uh, reddish velvety mucosa is extending upward from the Z line. That is the Barrett mucosa. Next slide. So, treatment esophagitis in the presence of Barrett esophagus can be healed with the proton pump inhibitor therapy. Um, high grade dysplasia in, in histology, if there is high grade dysplasia, we can either go for an esophageal resection or ablation of the Barrett epithelium. Next slide. A regular endoscopic surveillance for cancer is recommended in patients with the Barrett's. Biopsies are taken from four quadrants every two centimeters within the metaplastic tissue. Brush cytology can complement endoscopic biopsies and other biomarkers are now also available to have an accurate histological diagnosis. 